I guess start with the physical side. What what would be some common um, drills that you would do with young developing footballers to improve their their strength in the gym and and then their skill acquisition and then maybe go into the mental side as well. How can you boost your confidence going into a game, maybe if you are a forward? Yeah, all right. Let's look. We'll talk about the physical side of things. Just a good good basic um, strength training program uh, is a yep. really important one. Um, you know, for the sort of 14, 15, 16 year old athletes, they're starting to develop and get stronger. Uh, even all the way through, I would say that S and C is essential all the way through. Um, mm-hmm. But it's a really good basic program. It's specific to kicking. The ball's in contact with the boot for uh, ten milliseconds, um, and it's it's you know you can get a thousand newtons or a hundred kilograms worth of force. You know if you're kicking it long, so there's nothing that can quite mimic the impact in the gym. So you need need the kicking part for that. But just that good base core strength is a core strength is probably the one that's I think it's changed the most in my time yep. um, as, a, as a crucial one. Um, and glute function, probably they're the two biggies. In your experience being in the S&C room, being in the trenches and, and specifically running a kicking program and an AFL program, what, what would you say is a healthy amount of volume of kicks for, for mm. any player once they've got the technique down pat and you know they're, they're moving efficiently and they, they've got a good read of their body and all those type of things, but... Can you handle a fair amount of volume, do you think? Over yeah, a week? if you can. Um, they can handle more than they do probably. I think I would also, also say a few things on this. I could probably do a whole podcast. And, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, been a big, it's been a big topic. Um, yeah. Just a few snippets from across the board. I, I remember talking to Eddie Jones, the now English rugby union um, guy, and he was a coach. And he, at that stage, he was with, his, with the Australian team and Chris Connolly, who was our, our head coach, had a strong relationship with him. So he came around and spent a, a week with us. Um, and I talked to him about kicking and, and all the things that, that I do and um, which is really interested in. And I talked about volumes. I said, oh, that's one of the challenges. He, he said, well, it was a funny one. He said, look, if, well, if those were my guys, I'll be just saying to the S&C guys, just go and get them fit enough so that I can do as much kicking as I want. It was quite funny. He was pretty combative about it. Who are some strong influences or mentors, if you like? Um, that you three. To? Yeah. Dad would dad around hockey and cricket in Tamworth, where I come from originally, New South Wales. Yeah. Um, and they were just ahead of their time with, with um, you know, with training. It was all lots of um, games for learning and, and small-sided games and numbers and um, stuff that at that stage wasn't done. It's done a lot more now, but it wasn't at that stage done. So, you know, it was more like lines and and um, and more sort of isolated stuff. So they, he, uh, and he was just a really good coach. And it gave me the passion for coaching and and um, probably the, the other thing he really instilled in me was watching off the ball. So n- never watch it. He never used to watch on the ball uh, a game, whether whatever it was. Like he'd come down, I'd come down when I was working at Freo, I'd get into games and he'd be, he'd never be watching the ball. He'd always be watching to see what was happening up the ground or down the ground to see what, why, you know, why is, why is the full forward in 10 metres of space now? What would be some things that you do, like like you mentioned, the importance of building technique, but then building confidence with your technique, um, bringing those two together. So let's say you get a player to a point where their technique is now efficient um, to a point where you feel like that it's in a good spot. Now we want to build confidence in it. Um, what would be some things that you do for, for players in that position that's effective? I think um, I think making sure that they they understand that they've improved and showing their improvement. So we've got a lot of stats in, in, in AFL and that can, that can certainly help. You could got a lot of stats in, in lots of grades of footy and that can, that can help with your efficiency. Um, you can get, um, I mean, feedback from other people that can often um, be good, but don't expect it um, because a lot of times I did, a lot of the guys I've worked with uh, at the AFL level, there's sort of three levels of your kicking really. You've got the, the guys are really good kicks who people talk about all the time. And you've got the guys who are really bad kicks and they, they, they talk about all the time. But then there's this yeah. big middle group you just don't talk about kicking. And that's a yeah. good thing. So I talk about the guys who have moved from the, you know, that they're a bad kick to into this, well, nobody's talking about it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's a good thing. That's, that's a good positive. And what about the, the best kickers that you've worked with? What, what have you learned from them, the ones that do it really well, well in games? What are some of the big, big rocks? Well, some of the really good technical ones. So Nathan Chapman was fantastic. He's now doing the um, he pro, his pro kicker with the. Yep. So he was probably the first one I saw. I remember Jade Rawlings telling me he's the best kick in the club. Um, and so I looked at him. I looked at his technique, um, 
a lot. So and one of the things, and one of the a big group of, of kickers is that they've got really good range of motion in their knee and their hip. They're the guys who kick long. Um, so Greg Inglis was really good at that in rugby league. Uh, Matthew Pavlich was really good at, at Frio. David Mundy was probably, David Mundy's probably had um, the best technique I've seen out of anybody I've worked with 